I'm a journalist and I'm telling my colleagues and friends what journalism is losing and I keep on smiling. Because I think if you look back at the, the last years, we have lost a lot. We have lost the monopoly on breaking news. Because if something happens outside, with all respect to the colleagues over here, there will, no be, there will be no cameras of Rai. You will be there with your smartphones, and you will Twitter, and you will send the images around, and the journalistic organizations will follow you. You have lost, we have lost, not you, we have lost, journalism has lost its monopoly on news production. One of the examples you saw this morning, the footage shot from the balcony of the, 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 the protester in the streets of Cairo. That was an important image and it wasn't performed, it wasn't shot by a formal professional journalist. Nevertheless, it had perhaps more impact than some journalistic work. And we have lost the definition of news, because everyone can, can declare what is news these days. You know, news, as we saw it, you could see it as a kind of a conspiracy amongst journalists, but that doesn't mean that there are no, not a lot of other stories that should be told. Well, losing these monopolies and still keep on smiling is because I think a lot of other things are happening. I want to tell you just in short that this month of February, February of this year, it was really fun for me. Um, I went to Norfolk to Julian Assange uh, after we had contact through Jabber and all kinds of other secret things, and it felt really exciting. It's almost as if you were going there by blinded car, but it was an, a nice adventure. Of course, NOS could have tried to go to Aftenposten, the newspaper in Norway that possessed also documents of WikiLeaks. Stolen or not, I'm not going into that discussion, but they had them. But I thought this would be the wrong route, because something else is happening. WikiLeaks is not only an organization of a couple of people, I guess it's smaller than you sometimes think, based on these enormous amounts of documents they publicize, but it is it is, you can compare it, and I did it, uh, I, and I don't know if you agree with me, but I compare it also with what happens in the Arabic Spring, with all these people with their smartphones, and the, di the digital infrastructure that brings them together, instead of uh, keeping them individuals with no power, it brings them together to very powerful, ad hoc, or longer lasting groups. And I guess WikiLeaks is one of the examples. It is an example of a group of people who came together have some agendas, put a lot of energy in what they are doing, and they create a force on their own, a force that in a way brings the American government down or make it, makes it very nervous. It is also a force, and of course it's based upon a long uh, period of, of, of suppression, but it's also a force that stands up to Mubarak and in the end helps him to chase away. So this is going on, on all kinds of levels, and I call it I call these activities the activities of the bypassers. Because they can start for their from them for themselves. They can bypass the formal institutions. They can bypass the journalist institutions if they don't understand what's happening. So there's suddenly this power that arises at, the, at, 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 at a large speed. And it, it is very interesting. It is power to other groups than the formal institutions of which, which the journalism also is part. I don't see it as a threat. I see it as an enrichment. Because what, what we want to do, and it is, of course it's a journalistic example, we heard a lot of other things from other perspectives, but it is to connect, to create a kind of a symbiotic relationship within the journalist, in my, in, in my example, and the people out there, the people with the smartphones, the people with the information, the wiki leakers, and bring these stories out. Because I guess that's also what you saw in the Arabic Spring. The footage was shot on the balcony, but Al Jazeera and the BBC was needed to validate it and to bring it and to give it a global, uh, to, to, to spread it uh, to the global world and to start this pattern of action and reaction. And I guess that is what it's all about, finding this way of working together, symbiotic relationship, you can call it co-creation, you can also call it, call it working together or making news together, not in the offices of the journalistic organizations, but everywhere, making news together. 
I will give you a small example of what it means in daily practice from the Dutch uh, point of view. And it's just an example. There are so many other ways to, 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 to reach the same results. But a year ago, we created NOS Net, and it is not a program. It's just a network, or it's, it, it's, a, lot of, it's a lot of networks. It is a connection. It is a discussion. It is, is, uh, we, we keep with people in hospitals, school teachers, cops on the street, real estate agents, pharmacists, everyone. It's, it grows and grows and grows. And the only thing we do is talk with them, and they talk with us about what is happening in their world. Because that's based upon the idea that we, as a news organization, are not so much, and I said it with due respect, interested in their opinions on political things because there are just a couple of opinions and we know them. But we are interested in who they are, what their experiences are, and what they know, because what they know is unique. And they have a lot of stories to tell. And a lot of stories can, can be transformed into journalism that you can produce in your eight o'clock bulletin in the evening, or you can put on your website or whatever. So there is a, only an enrichment the number of sources is so much bigger than it ever was before. The number of stories you co can connect with is so much bigger than there was before. And as a news organization, you really are, well, you should thank everyone on its knees that they want to work with you. They want to share the stories with you. And it is perhaps, and I hope, because they trust you as a partner. I guess that is. The, the, the real thing that is going on in changement. It is not this, this one organization with its formal journalism uh, standing high on this mountain and sending its broadcasters and making its websites. It's about an organization that is next to you with all kind of horizontal relationships, part of a lot of networks, not there on the mountain, but close to everyone, and then helping in creating stories. Some we take the initiative most of the time, of a lot of the times, people with who we, are, who we are connected take the initiatives. And the fun thing is, the people out there, they are honest in their storytelling. They are not spin doctors. They are not spokespersons. They only have the interest in telling the stories. And if you tell the stories together, there's a bright new future for my part of journalism. And it is fun. It is not frightening. It is fun. It is rewarding. Thank you. Thank you.